before we start, I'm getting over, I don't even know what it is, I'm assuming it's some kind of head cold. So if I'm coughing a lot in this video, I will try to edit out as best as I can. Second of all, I'm in a bit of a mood, so forgive me. Today we are going to be talking about tunica scraping and the actual science behind it, at least in my opinion. This is experimental, you do not need this to gain with penis enlargement, but there is some benefits to it. I'm just trying to address some controversies that came up the past, I don't know, month or so about this subject that I only talked about two or three times publicly. Anyway, before I get into it, if you want to learn more about <laughs> tunica scraping, you can check out BD's Big Book of Length and BD's Girth Expansion Pack bundle in the description below. Essentially, it is my streamlined version of penis enlargement using physiotherapy research to back my claims. So if you're looking for like a science-based routine that doesn't take too much time and is, in my opinion, extremely efficient, check it out in the description below or the pinned comment. So let's give some context. I want to say it was like either April or May when I first brought this up because me and Perv were talking about um, different ways we can do tunica release. We came up with massage massage under tension as well and then I chimed in about the idea of using a scraping tool to release some uh, disorganized collagen growth along the tunica albuginia so perp does have his reservations about using a tool on your penis because you can't really gauge um, how much pressure you are using that's one of the main downsides with it so we're going to talk about actually how to do this without hurting yourself and go from there okay so first let's talk about the research though just so you guys know i'm not talking out of my ass with this because some people are in the opinion that i just make shit up i do not what we are talking about is something called the gratson technique and let me pull up the browser here okay the gratson technique was i think developed in the 90s it was done to treat tissue fibrosis say in the knee in the shoulders and the lower back it is much more aggressive than what we are trying to do because it is really trying to break up deep rooted fibrotic buildup we are just trying to stimulate the collagen fibrils to relax they will literally rub back and forth with a tool much longer than this it's more like kind of like a saw blade almost let me see if I can find a picture <sighs> Gretzen See, so this is for the lumbar. So basically, they follow the groove of the muscle. So if we're using a similar technique, we want something that follows the shape of the penis. But again, we are not being nearly as aggressive. As you can see with this individual down here, he is beet red. If you're doing that to your penis, you are doing it wrong. And I would actually bet that this is not actually Gratson technique, and this is a very old form of gua sha. Another controversy that I have to deal with with this is Gratson technique is based off of the Eastern ancient medicine gua sha, where they would scrape the chi channels, well that feels nice, they would scrape the chi channels to block or clear out blocked chi. And what really what they were doing was breaking up fibrosis in the joints and then they were clearing out the lymphatic system. The problem is they would intend to overdo it and then they would get a bunch of hematomas and bruising up and down the skin. Obviously you don't want that on your penis, but Fast forward today, we are seeing research studies done on the Gratson technique, which is the evolved version of Gua Sha that has some actual benefits to soft tissue therapy. And this study that I found was done in Korea. Back to the screen. Doo, doo, doo. So the study that I have found was done in Korea, so you guys can see the name. The Gratson technique... <laughs> so the Gretzen, fuck, I swear I can read guys, believe it or not. The effects of Gretzen technique on the pain in range of motion in patients with chronic low back pain. So what this study did is they first gauged their pain. And since pain is subjective, it was just an average score of 0 to 100. 
you know, like the normal 0 to 10 score. Then they also took the range of motion of the hip. So, like, depending on how much you can bend forward, backwards, sideways. They've done grats and technique to 15th individuals for four weeks. They saw a 25-point drop in pain levels. So they went from about a 5 out of 10 to a 2.5 out of 10, meaning their problems were still there. But this shows a huge difference, at least in patient comfort. And then when we get to like the practical use, we are seeing a, anywhere from a 15% increase in range of motion of the joint or 25 to 3% depending on what you're treating. Now, some of these issues are going to be easily treated just with lumbar lumbar um lower lumbar uh fuck lower lumbar treatment okay so it just really depends but compared to the control who had no change we are seeing a significant increase in just a month so just off the top we know that gua sha scraping grats and technique tunica scraping would have some benefit now in my opinion, most beginners should not be running out and getting a scraping tool. Even though I sell them on Peak Mouth Physique, I just found something that would fit the penis and I just started selling it for relatively cheap. You do not need to buy from me. You also just don't need it in general. But I did have a run on the store because of people writing posts on how effective it was for them. I think it is more effective for people like myself who've been doing PE for at least three years who have developed some kind of disorganized collagen buildup. So what happens is, if you were doing some of these old school techniques, you would see little nodules and bumps form on the tunica albuginea. That is literally collagen out of line and potentially a little bit of scar tissue buildup. All we are doing is rubbing it in place. When it comes to technique, it is very simple. It should be slightly pleasant. Imagine this is connected to my body. Right here, I'm holding my glands. You want to pull it taut, not hard, just so it's mostly elongated. Slightly come in and rub against the sides. It should not bend at all. All right, so some guys were explaining to me that they were basically folding it over the blade like so. You do not want that. You want a slight push in and a release. Repeat. It doesn't really matter what direction you go either. So you can do up, you can do down. The main thing you really want to avoid is doing the top and bottom. Because on our penis, there is a nerve bundle that runs up the top. This would really piss it off. <laughs> um, that being said, I've done it a few times, no real issues, but better safe than sorry, right? Then on the bottom, we have the corpus cavernosum. And this is a completely different system than the tunica albuginea and the corpus cavernosum. So it will have any issues stretching because it is much of a thinner packet, if you will. And since your urethra is there, you can cause probably some inflammation internally with constant scraping. So you just want to do left and right side. As for repetitions, I only do 50 a side. Okay, that's all you need. You're literally just trying to get the tissues to relax. Nothing crazy. As for the controversies, people would say it just doesn't work without really ever looking into it. This is why I have to provide research studies, <laughs> okay? I don't pull shit out of my ass. I never try to pull shit just out of my ass <sighs> to, you know, sell stuff, as some people may believe. Then there's obviously, this is an experimental technique, and this is why I haven't really pushed it in the past three months other than the first video I've done on it. There's still a lot to be worked with in it. But since it is starting to pick up some popularity, I needed to talk about it to make sure you guys do it safely. So remember, you're not sawing through, it's just a light brushing. Perv does not think you should use lubricant. I think you need to use lubricant just because this, if you don't have any kind of lubricant, you're more likely to cause uh, a bit of bruising on the side of the shaft if you go a bit too hard. Perv thinks if you do use lubricant, you're incentivizing yourself to go harder than you really should. But again, if you're only doing 50 to 100 reps, at let's say a two or three pressure speaking you're really not going to get bruising unless you really overdo it um but yeah 
you don't you also don't really need a tool for this if you're trying to do this the way I've been kind of teaching it for three years before I changed my terminology around we're doing tunica shears so this used to be called diamond jokes but jokes is a swear word in our community um, basically make a pincer grip take the size of your shaft semi erect go up to the glands stop repeat again repeat same idea except you're not having nearly as thin a surface area you will need lubricant i recommend being semi-erect and wearing some kind of cock ring just so that way you have some distension in the tunica therefore you can actually compress against the fibers while they're fully elongated or at least under some kind of elongation right uh what else but yeah i just needed to talk about this before it got out of hand so I'm not saying don't do it. I'm also saying do do it. I'm just saying if you're going to do this, make sure you take it slow because you can hurt yourself. Okay. Um, that wraps it up. If you want to learn more, check out the rest of my YouTube channel. If you want it fast, check out uh, my books in the description below. And r slash getting bigger. That is our subreddit. It's the best place to ask me questions. I don't really check the comments here all that often. So... I'll talk to you guys in the next one.